Miles. How are you? I'm very good. How are you? Okay, we've got a bit of a lag, but let's see if it, it uh, fixes itself. Um, just to jump into it really direct. Oh, I'm loving the tea. I'm jealous. Um, I would love to kind of like jump into memory lane directly and kind of talk about the first time that we met and also your directorial debut. Wow. Yeah. 2019. <laughs> 2019. It's so crazy to me. I mean, I've just been thinking about that lately, how that was basically the beginning of me working at all, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and um, we met on set for the first yes, time, I remember. Um, yeah, Alphaville Noir was like a total experiment, but after living in Paris for three years and not really having any kind of show opportunity, I was like, you know, I mean, it was tied eventually to um, this amazing project that we did at Palais de Tokyo, but exactly. you know, the initial sort of impetus for that project was just like, to hell with it. I'll just make my own, you know, I'll just make my own show and rent a space and a soundstage somehow and find a way to like create this video work um, that at the time of its conception had no sort of backing behind it or, you know, any end destination really kind of caught up. Exactly. Um, and, uh, and that was an amazing, amazing opportunity and event. And I'm so happy that you I mean, Miles, for me, it was literally the second time that I'd been on a full black, fully black set. Do you know what I mean? So what you gave to me to be able to do that with you in Paris, a place where I lived for three years as well, and actually had horrible racist experiences altogether, to be able to do that with you there. I mean, you, you brought me back twice. Do you know what I mean? It just really redefined my work, actually, as well. It really did. Babe, you gave so many people the ability to show their crafts in a country that is really, really denying our, our skin, our color, our being. And even for you to live there for the amount of time that you did and saying that you did this on your own, I mean, it only, for me, it really kind of like applauds how I work in general, where I just do what I want to the best extent that I can. And hopefully I can translate that into future projects. This project for me was something that was super gestational in a way for me. Yeah. And, uh, and, and I'm very happy that we met, you know, at, at that time. And it was sort of like, we were there almost for like my birth in a way. I don't know, like it, up until then, I'd literally just done stuff in like weird artist squats in Montreal and was like kind of studying in Paris and doing some side stuff in like nightclubs and whatever. But, you know, um, that was the first time that I felt like I was in an art context. And that was just so exciting to me. I really, really loved seeing a black boy do what you did and allowing all of us such agency to be able to be ourselves as well. Like I couldn't, couldn't have dreamt of any type of job like that ever happening. It was really quite the dream come true. I love how you're fucking scrunching your fucking lemon as I'm talking, yes. <laughs> I just didn't know who I was as an artist until I was able to have that space and that agency. And I guess working in performance is, is very particular in that way because you don't have space to mess around with paint or even sculpture like you 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 need an audience you need a context you need a thousand people to say yes to you before you actually have work to show so um it's very complicated uh to mess up it's very complicated because you're you have to do it in public just this massive super chaotic festival of like performance um made by the incredible vittoria Matarese. how did this translate into you doing Anne romance after that and how did that how did you make, because for me, everything's connected that you do. Like I can't see the disconnect anymore. Obviously you're in it, which is the connection of everything, but you kind of really emphasize, you made it even bigger. In that context, I really wanted to make something that was very, very quiet and very, very pointed. So that piece was, was the idea behind it was that it was gonna be just sort of a representation of two people that perhaps were infatuated with one another or just otherwise intrigued, um, crossing paths for five seconds, one looks back to check the other out and then keeps going just in time to miss the fact that the other one also checks the other out and then 
point. So person A, person B, and then neither of them know that they, you know. Exactly, yeah. Um, and I wanted to take that five second interaction and see if you could extend it to the point of being completely, you know, unwatchable to the extent that it turns into like a sculpture, you know, that's very, very quiet. That's very, very delicate. And you, you can never really consume the whole scenario at once. Um, and that in there, that's where I sort of found like a little bit of a sweet spot for myself. And I, I wouldn't have known that until I, I, I was like messing around with, with, uh, you know, in the basement of the museum with 30 performers and, <laughs> and lots of jewels and plants and flowers. Girl, and the jewels, yeah. the durags. It was, um, yeah. yeah it, was, it, was, it, was like a, it was like a playground, it was like a sandbox. I remember just going out to Franc Prix right across the street to buy myself like a little, you know, like an orange juice or something <laughs> just to take a breather. And they had right next to the gum at the front at the cash register, they had these little geranium plants that were like this big yeah. and they were super cute. And I was just like, oh my God, like this is how I feel somehow. <laughs> and they were four euros and I bought one and I just walked to the, you know, Palais de Tokyo just staring at it. And I was like, so it just made me so happy. And I decided, you know, it was the first time also that I had ever seen my work from the outside because that day, you know, we were maybe an hour away from the doors opening. Yeah. I walked in and walked into the pit, climbed down into the thing, into the stage and just like took it out of the container and just plopped it on the floor and just kind of spread the dirt a little bit. So it was sort of just growing there, kind of where I would have been. Yeah. Um, and I just told myself, that's my body devil. And that's me. And that's it. Just to see that little thing in the middle and just decide like, I can decide that a little geranium this big is going to be my body double and that's, you know, like this is my world and these are my rules and I can do whatever I want. And like that is something that is so gratifying and so incredibly important to an artist um, or anyone, I believe, uh, the ability to just create and build worlds. Exactly. Uh, you know, yeah. So that was really exciting to me. Okay, I would really like to talk about something that I'm really obsessed with because I wasn't there to do it with you. Pneumotherapy. Pneumotherapy, yeah, what? pneumotherapy too. Um, I did that at Paraton in New York. It was amazing. Thank you. It was really fun. Um, it was really hard. It looked hard. <laughs> like, do you feel in any way bad about doing painful things or doing things that you're like, okay, this is going to cost my body to do this. Uh, or do you see it as an accomplishment once you've overcome this idea that you have and you've created this world and in that you've followed the rules that you've set up for yourself? My physiotherapist can attest to this that I, I never consider whether or not I can actually physically do a work. Um, if I have an idea, I'm going to find a way to execute it physically. That's sort of like the last priority for me. That's like the least of my concerns. I think my job and a big part of my studio practice is um, to train my body because it is sort of my primary material. Yes. Uh, along with all of the installation sort of that I do. Um, honing that and making sure that it's capable of living up to the ideas that I present it with um, is just as important as a painter cleaning their brushes. The work has never been about pain. And I think that that's a really like, important distinction to make. Yeah. Um, I think conversations about you know, pain and endurance are kind of similar in a way to me, you know, questions about um, the politics of my work as well in so far as all of that is sort of incidental and very peripheral and parallel actually to the conversations that I'm actually sort of having with myself about the work, like when I'm creating it, which are a lot more abstract and a lot more poetic. Um, I don't really think that pain for the sake of pain is, is particularly poetic or, or particularly interesting, you know? Um, so that's not, that's not what I'm trying to uh, elicit ever. I, I really want my work to be unwatchable. Once you make something that is unwatchable, it just becomes seeable. It becomes visible. You can, you can, you can, you don't watch it, you see it. And I feel way more comfortable with that 
um, in what I'm trying to say and what I'm trying to do than, 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 than something where, you know, the theater format, which I, I personally, LOL, we're in a theater right now. Um, but like, <laughs> yeah, you know, like, yeah, exactly. exactly. Um, it's just, it's just not my craft either, you mm -hmm. know? And I think that that's like, that's the distinction that people exactly. also have a hard time making sometimes, right? Yeah. What I do is way closer to sculpture. It, my work is like a lot about decay as well, you know, and I'm really interested in the decay of certain forms. And when I'm working with, um, you know, flowers and I'm, when I'm working with, you know, living matter or exactly. dead matter, minerals or, you know, uh, the human body, um, you know, the, the human body will change shape. If you give it a rule, it'll inevitably change shape despite whatever we set out for it over the course of seven hours, um, which I find very interesting as well, a, a, you know, a, a plant, a flower, you know, will, will sort of start to wilt after, after Two days. seven days or, or, or even like a couple of days. And then a stone will start to change shape over the course of, you know, 700 years. It's, it's time acts on all forms. It's just, it's a, 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 a way of kind of composing them in a way that, that that kind of decay can kind of work in time. You know, my ideal art viewing experience is like walking through the, the marble halls of the Louvre um, and knowing that those sculptures are sort of there, but they're, they're, they're very, 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 very slowly going to move. They're going to change. They're going to sort of become more matte and then more shiny. And then, you know, like time will act on them too. In this current state that we are in in the world, do you, um, are you seeing space for you? Are you still claiming it? Are you experiencing racism? Um, what are your experiences? That's a big question. Jean I know, girl. Everybody in my work is black. And in the, in the rules of my universe, I decided very early on that I wanted the black body to be considered as, 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 as integral and as, as, as symbolic and universally symbolic of humanity as uh, the white body. So everything that you see in my work is not about the performers being black, it's about the performers being humans and you have to adapt. If you are not, uh, you have to adapt your perspective and your view of yourself um, through, through, through a black body as opposed to where I'm you know, in a gallery space uh, and I'm witnessing you know, or, or, or a museum looking at you know, Caravaggio's or whatever, uh, or, 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 or contemporary art where I'm witnessing white bodies and needing to adapt it to, you know, or films or whatever. I'm looking yeah. at uh, symbols of, of romance, of love, of, of, of death, of, of, you know, of longing, of everything, of desire, um, all through the proxy of a body that's not mine. So I just wanted to make work that I could see myself in as well, you know, in, in, in the age of extremely complicated times in regards to representation and, and what we sort of are using representation for. Um, I'm, not, I'm not interested in solving problems that are much bigger than me because I can't. You really have been creating these spaces and you've low-key just been um, brilliant at bringing black bodies everywhere and like showing not just exactly our color, but as well that we're, um, that we're more than that. And I love that you can do that. And I love that you are doing that. Thank you. You're beautiful. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, thank um, you, thank you, Miles. Um, uh, like always, um, yeah. your mind. So thank you so much for sharing, sharing, sharing. I do hope that the kids that watch this get as inspired as I always am when I'm with you. And I do also hope that they get something else out of it because I have been watching some of your interviews and people do seem to ask you the same thing over and over again. So um, yes, I hope there's a little bit more depth yeah, yeah, yeah. Stay, um, stay healthy. Keep safe. Say hi to the mom. Yeah, likewise. Thank you, and thank you, uh, Pampangin Theater team. Bye. Bye.